at this place in history. We're in Johnson with Executive Director of the Vermont Historical Society, Steve Perkins. What brings us here? So we're here to talk about Julian Scott, one of Vermont's most famous 19th century artists. I've got some great works of art for us to take a look at. I'm looking forward to seeing some of Julian Scott's artwork, but tell us more about who he was and what's the connection to Johnson. So the connection of Johnson is that Julian Scott was born in Johnson in 1846. And ultimately, by the time he was like 15 years old, the Civil War had broken out. He decided that uh, he was going to follow his older brothers and join the Union Army. But he's only 15, and he was a pretty scrawny little guy, but he ended up uh, becoming a fifer, and so he was a musician. I think what some people don't know is that the musicians also served as um, medics or ambulance men. At the Battle of Lee's Mills, he crossed a stream numerous times to bring back wounded soldiers, and Julian Scott was the first American soldier to get the Congressional Medal of Honor for battlefield bravery. So he was wounded and ended up in a, a hospital in New York, uh, ultimately. And during his convalescence, um, he really showed an aptitude for drawing. There was a, a benefactor, a, a man who was funding the hospital from New York, saw his work and said, well, you know, this is really nice, and, and actually funded some of his study so he could continue with his artwork. So we're looking at a, a sketch. Um, this is a pastel um, sketch from the Vermont Historical Society collection. It's very indicative of Scott's work. Um, he always put the common soldier first. So if you look at other artwork from the time, often you see the general up front, you know, leading the troops and they're kind of in a blur in the background. He always focused on the common soldier. And people might recognize his name because he has a piece that's featured prominently in the State House. He does. He painted this monumental painting called the Battle of Cedar Creek. Now the Battle of Cedar Creek took place near the end of the war. Vermont soldiers played a very pivotal role in that battle and so he was asked to commemorate Vermonters roles by painting this large painting. Uh, the legislature voted to pay him $5,000 to paint this painting. It ended up costing him more to paint the painting than what they no. gave him. He went back, but uh, typical thrifty Vermonters of the time, they refused <laughs> to give him another five, they gave him another four. So I think he, he came out uh, making $400 or $500 wow. total on this huge painting. But by 1890, um, he was looking for some work and he was hired to be a special agent of the U.S. Census. They hired a number of artists, uh, well-known artists of the time, to go especially to the American West. The 1890 census was the first census that counted Native Americans as Americans. He was sent out to not only count Native Americans, but also create images of them. So what do you have here? This is a great little autograph book that we found um, in a box of stuff that was dropped off as a donation to the Vermont Historical Society. This is an autograph book owned by a young man, 10, 11 years old, whose father died uh, in the Civil War, was a cavalry officer. And I'm flipping through this little book, have, have no idea, and sure enough, here is an autograph oh in the book. My. Julian wow. Scott, November 18th, 1874, so he must have been back in the state in 1874, but it's got this beautiful pen and ink drawing of a soldier, I will assume sleeping against uh, a tree, but obviously a cavalry officer with the high boots um, there could have been the young man's father. Wow, what a who find. passed away. So yeah, just flipping through this book, said, oh, I know that name, I know that artwork, so you never know what you're gonna find. At this place in history,